must all be aware that this particular lecture and the workshop is a part of the ongoing Chandigarh Arts and Heritage Festival, which started three years back. This is the third year. First year, we had the famous painter, landscape painter, Paramji Singh Ji. He was here for a few days and he painted his landscapes. Then we had last year, again, a name, a big signature, and a very you know, proficient, prominent artist of the country, Jatin Das. He again spared for five days. And this year, we have Atul Ji. Since 25th, he is here, and he's been sharing his pearls of wisdom, and he's so blatantly open about his self and about others that young students and others who watched him, witnessed him, talk and paint, they will definitely really benefit what kind of predicaments, what kind of you know, uncertainties, what kind of, uh, you know, you, you feel that you're not very sure about a particular color, particular theme, particular sketch, a particular line, he would share that with them so that they get confidence, that they come to know, yes, artwork is not always that it's there in the mind and in one go it go, you go and it kind of you know, completes. You, you face difficulties, that is what he shared with them. I'm so very thankful to you that you are so open about yourself, your process, thinking process, painting process. I once again welcome you and I must share with you that this is the artwork which Atul Lodiaji produced during this workshop and uh, it's a different technique, it's a watercolour. Earlier we saw Paramji ji painting you know, landscapes in a different style, in different genre. Last year, Jatin Das, he was a different kind of a artist and Atul ji, very patient, slowly, he talks, he discusses, he picks up the brush, maybe, you know, draws a line, then goes, goes again, thinks, contemplates, comes back again. This is a different kind of a process which he shared with artists. And one thing more which I would like to share with you, when, when we invite artists for workshops here, we never ask them to produce an artwork for us because it's become a kind of a routine with many galleries, many other organizations. They invite a few artists, pay them some money, and in lieu of that, they get good works of art in their collection. This is not our intention, which we make clear to every artist. In fact, artists feel very happy about it, that we are not lalchi about you know, collecting their work. We really want them to be here so that people benefit from their presence and their experience. That is what, what all said and done is kind enough to present this work to Chandigarh Lalitikal Academy. Thank you. And this is probably the first work which will be in our city by this great artist. Now I'll request him to kindly come up and share his experiences. He's brought a whole body of work, 25 years of work with him, which he will share with us. And Atulji and you. Thank you. It's indeed a great pleasure to be here in Chandigarh, a beautiful, lovely city. Had heard so much about it for all these years. And, uh, but somehow never have happened to come here. And uh, this time, I could spend some time here. I am thankful to Chandigarh Lalit Kala Academy, Divan Mana, to invite me here to share my thoughts and ideas and uh, my work with students, artists of the city. It's a wonderful feeling. And I am thank you for all of you to come here today for this uh, presentation. It's not going to be a small presentation because my intention was that, uh, um, uh, well, there are, you know, many works. Uh, I've been quite prolific, uh, 25 years and a lot of work. So I'm showing some, not everything, but selected works from the specific periods and the specific um, um, genre which I attempted. and. Uh, the idea was that uh, people see, basically, and uh, art, young artists mainly, you know, they would get chance to see that my early works in between and now the works which uh, I am doing. So there's a lot to be going to, almost 277 images, but of course there are some of the details of the major large body. and. Uh, uh, it's, uh, but I will 
try to be as precise as I can and uh, uh, because I have a very bad habit that if you ask me something, I always start with prehistoric. So it's, it's a, often a long uh, uh, discussion, long kind of uh, explanation and uh, uh, detailed story. I like to talk in details, you know, so I have to be careful today. And, um, um, but uh, yeah, you'll get the idea that how my mind works, how I, why certain things matter to me and um, how I see my own art and how I see other people's art. Little bit about myself, I was born and brought up in Bombay. Though my father came from Saurashtra in 38, but uh, my sisters, myself, we were all born and brought up in Bombay. And very early, at the age of 11, I was very clear that I want to be a painter. And um, since then, I have never kind of looked back till today. The same passion and uh, love and faith for painting has remained. Uh, my elder sister was very keen that I should go to architecture uh, because my father was a building contractor and she thought that if I go to architecture it would be wonderful for the family, family business and uh, that would help because everyone in 70s would uh, tell my family and you know neighbors, relatives, everybody that he should not go to fine arts because if you go to fine arts he will starve. You know, that was the kind of a notion people had then. And I think sometimes even still people think that way. But uh, luckily I was good in drawing and painting and uh, I had a kind of a faith in myself. And I also could convince my family that what I'm doing is not something wrong. So I had a very, uh, from very early age, habit and tendency to share. I think sharing is the most important thing in our life and we must uh, keep on explaining, showing, sharing, um, whatever it is. So uh, somewhere they realized that his, he should be allowed to go to fine arts. And uh, yeah, I failed twice in SSC because of the maths and uh, because she insisted, elder sister, that uh, I should take maths and physics chemistry instead of history geography. So it's an old SSC. Uh, stand, stand time and um, but during that two years I did a lot of painting I used to go to Jahangir Art Gallery and my father in fact gave me first class pass you know from Ghat Koper station to VT to go to so I can go to town and see the shows um, then I joined JG School of Art I was there for five years I was awarded fellowship there and uh, since then, it's been like that 91, 92 I was a French government scholar went to Paris I think we should, uh, it's been announced quite some time that please switch off your mobile, you know, it's really bothering and disturbing. <coughs> so, um, yeah, uh, you know, when I passed out during the art school, of course, one does all kind of things, assignments are given and one attempts and uh, being in Bombay, you have a lot of uh, um, uh, you know, exposure in terms of artists, writers, poets. Also, one thing happened with me that uh, when I thought that I draw well, I like painting, I enjoy doing paintings, same time, you know, I discovered that I love cinema as well. Yeah, very early. That, uh, but cinema, not, of course, my mother was extremely fond of popular Hindi films of 50s and 60s but uh, so there was an atmosphere where uh, the cinema was talked about and uh, you know the music was very much on all the time uh, but I saw films by people like Satyajit Ray, Ritwik Ghatak and some of the European masters from France, Italy and um, Germany and those movies you know what whenever I could you know I become member of film society Literature, which again is very much uh, uh, part of my imagination, my uh, perception. I read, I have a lot of poet and writer friends. Sharing, talking, discussing with them is, is all has helped me a big deal. <clears throat> I am showing you work from 1987. I was doing diverse kind of things during the art school days and after that. Uh, I was mainly influenced by the American artists, uh, pop artists like Robert Rauschenberg and Jasper Johns, Andy Warhol, 
Roy Lichtenstein, all that kind of thing. And I could see in their work the kind of uh, energy which I somewhere felt that the city of Bombay also provides. So I often say that one of the major influence in my career as an artist is the city of Bombay. You know, you come out from the, I mean, you know, it's such, I've been, I, I don't know how many times I must have said, okay, what a beautiful city is this, you know. It's so expanded, trees and uh, wide and uh, um, also quiet. Uh, I mean, of course, I'm not comparing, but the city of Bombay has a lot to offer in the sense that you come out of your home and you are bombarded by diverse imagery, sound, noise, and all kind of events. And... Uh, you know, if I, I often said in my various presentation that uh, probably if I would have born, brought up in Shanti Niketan, I would have been a different kind of painter. I am not saying that that would have been better or this would have been better, it, not in, in that comparison. But the whole, uh, you know, um, where you live, your surrounding, your neighborhood, your family, people, everything influences. And I am quite open for influences. I am all the time influenced. I was told that not to see other people's work because if I see it, you know, I will get influenced. I said, how can you do that? You know, I mean, sheer joy of seeing, that's the priority, that's the main thing. It's not something which is one uh, can avoid or, or, you know, I mean, painting is what? It's not, I also realized initially that uh, in the early period that just um, knowing the skill of drawing and painting is not the thing, that's why I'm an artist. I'm an artist because I can see, you know, the, the visual art is an art of I and you know we how we see how we don't see how um, seeing something you know can affect us in such a profound way all that I discovered in my journey I'm showing you works from 1987 in between I will talk sometimes sometimes I may not talk sometimes uh, I may give you titles and the size scale etc but mostly I started with large oils on canvas and um, uh, there were figurative works quite realistically rendered and um, then gradually the way time changed I grew I had seen many other things many things happened in my own life and uh, uh, death trauma you know, illness, all this thing has kind of, uh, has been a part of what happened in the city, what happened in the country, the tensions between the communities, all this thing has sort of also, has kind of come in my work. Uh, uh, 1987, uh, I did some paintings and I'm starting from there, though I passed out in 82, but but that period was like a lot of things. Of course, that can be a totally different kind of a presentation if I have those works. But uh, I am showing you works from uh, 87 onwards. Huh. This one is uh, um, not very large, but 5 feet by 5 feet oil on canvas. And I painted in, it's called July. In the month of July, I painted. In July, we have a very heavy monsoon in Bombay rain and uh, there's this man uh, was looking outside and there's a I mean of course in slides you can't have the the surface and the texture and the details of the way things are rendered but still I mean um, you will have just an idea about uh, what I was up to in those days it's called distant thunder again a heavy rain and the cloud is approaching but the location which you see is the uh, location in uh, Ahmedabad at Sabarmati Ashram, Gandhiji's Ashram, self-portrait. This one is called Yogi, my nephew. I, I bought a camera in 86 and I thought I would do photography because I have such a wonderful visual sense and I can easily do the photography and I, soon I realized that photography is the most difficult medium. It's not easy to have a, take a, a, a real good photograph. So whatever photographs I took, they were all mostly like a sketch for my own painting. And um, since uh, then, the camera has always been with me but uh, uh, mostly as a kind of, you know, what I see something, I notice something, I 
I don't sketch on the spot, but uh, with camera I just uh, uh, record it and then work uh, later in my studio. This is called the room. This is the one work which is from my first solo show. It was in '89 in Bombay. You know the uh, the what is wonderful about painting that after paint, painting the figures and in in veranda, in balcony, in room, even in this particular painting, there was a boy sitting uh, on the threshold. And while walking, I all of a sudden realized, okay, what if I just remove the boy, the figure? Probably then there is a more the painting would generate more emotion rather than you know having figure. So this empty room, it's a six feet by four feet canvas, and I think it works better without figure. It's, a, it's called Goldfish, a tribute to Matisse, great French master, Henry Matisse, in his studio. I was interested in the solitude, quietness, you know, like in the afternoon when the maid has gone and the kitchen is empty, everyone is sleeping. During that time, you know, the, the atmosphere and the quality of light and silence, which I would observe and wanted to depict all those uh, during that time. Father, my father looking at my painting, but we don't know what he is looking. And there are kind of a dip colors which you see on the edge of the canvas. So there is something which is very colorful. And overall painting is monochrome. So I, I, I love to play with these uh, uh, things that, uh, you know, someone is seeing, but we don't know what he is seeing. And the pose and the gesture. Bombay Buccaneer, self-portrait. Now, in between happened, I mean, before this painting, you can see that the early five or seven works which I showed, they were quite realistically rendered. Uh, but this one has a different tone. It's, it, it is real. There is a realism, but still it's, a, it's not the same as the early works. And uh, this is after my return from Paris. In Paris, um, uh, gave me a great uh, sort of... Uh, vision or a open in a tremendous way there were openings you know when i it was the first time i ever went at the age of 30 uh, outside india and that was straight into the city of paris and uh, um, you know i was confronted by from pre renaissance to post modern art and uh, i saw so much over there you know from um, medieval tapestries to you know early woodcuts and uh, you know, Renaissance art and modern art and um, very recent contemporary art with mixed media, everything. And I think uh, I was just away. I was in Mare area, seven minutes away from Picasso Museum. And I felt that uh, when I saw Picasso, I said, my God, this man has done such a profound work in a, such a fantastic way. And he is not even afraid to, you know, shift and changes. Whereas, uh, and I, one of the things I realized after seeing the great masters like Rembrandt and Courbet and Cezanne, I felt that, you know, I call myself a figurative painter and within the figurative genre, such a profound work has happened. And what I was doing is totally, utterly ordinary. So I lost total faith in myself. I, at a point, I also felt that I would stop painting forever. It took me three years to come to terms with you know, what I should be doing and how I should be doing. And one of the things I realized that, uh, uh, you know, my life is, I, 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 I traveled within Europe then, and I felt that uh, within European cities, you know, still there is some kind of a common thing which I find it's cold, you know, um, it's a different kind of atmosphere, light is different. Of course, the, the light in Holland and light, light in, uh, um, Florence, they are, I mean, Amsterdam or Florence, it's, it's a different kind of a light and all, that's true. But at the same time, I felt that my country from where I come is so different. You know, the people, the you know, habits, the languages, even the way we speak, you know, our gestures, all this thing is quite unique. So I said, if I go back to my roots and my people and my, my um, extremely, you know, actually autobiographical things, if I attempt, then something may come differently in my own work. And I thought that that is the best way. So after three years, I realized and uh, I felt, you know, there is a, such a huge, uh, I mean, for me, the early paintings, what I saw as a very young boy, as an artist, were the oleographs of Raja Ravi Verma, calendars, you know, depicting gods and goddesses. And of course, the, the Bollywood posters, 
Now we have all digitally sort of uh, manipulated images, but earlier there were hand painted uh, pictures and uh, I felt that uh, you know, so those were the kind of a thing I knew as a painting. These are painted pictures. So um, I thought the cinema and the Bollywood is such, such a um, major role has played in Indian uh, people's life. So something can come from there as well. And I think it was a Paris who gave me this courage to sort of uh, allow yourself and do it. If you feel like doing something, just go ahead. Because I was very close to painters like Tayab Mehta, Akbar Padamsi, Prabhakar Barve, um, Giv Patel, Sudhir Patwardhan. And I thought they all respect me and um, they like my work. But I thought that if I now change, I, have I had already had my solo show. And if I change, probably they, would might, they might feel that, uh, oh, you know, after Paris, this is... This is something, you know, you know, he has been influenced by the Western way of looking at it. But I felt that, you know, one should. I feel so many things. There are so many emotions. There are, for no reason, that profound sadness comes from where, why. You know, there are, otherwise, you know, I love to joke and laugh, you know. All these things. So I said, you know, I am not one single mind. There are many minds. There are many, many layers in me and I should allow all that. So after that, I have never looked back. Um, so this one is, of course, when I returned, there was a film called Bazigar, uh, and the hero has um, glasses, and there was uh, two actresses in his uh, glasses reflected. That was the Shah Rukh Khan and the two other actresses. That was the film. And that poster was on, so I, I just cut the small ad from the newspaper and just painted myself like a bond. And the two painters whom I admire a lot called Bhupen Khakhar, Indian painter, and British artist David Hockney. And both has a profound sense of humor in their work. And I thought, you know, that would, would be wonderful if I do it. So that's how the journey in a different way started. My father, letter from a father, he wrote me many letters in Paris and one of the last letter before I was returning, that text in his own handwriting, of course, which I uh, projected and drew it. I was away and uh, returning home. One small thing, you know, I, I know it's it, this way if I talk and it's going to be too long, but I'll just have to tell you this, that uh, when I was doing this painting, I read the news uh, in Times of India that there was this, uh, uh, um, you know, Siberian cranes which regularly used to come to Bharatpur and that particular they didn't come. And you know, I was returning after a long time, you know, back home. So um, I, you know, that again, those. So you see, those. It's actually a newspaper photograph which I had seen, which I incorporated with the thing. And then there's a old clock uh, depicting time. When I was writing my father's letter, I saw because I was in front of the projector and I could see myself, my own shadow. So I also asked my brother, okay, you know, I'm just standing. You just kind of draw me. So he did the drawing of my counter, and. Uh, um, I started allowing many things. This is called Oh Naina. Naina, my sister, she has gone through a major uh, tumor on actually on a pituitary gland. And um, thrice, I mean, for 10 years, she was in just in hospital all the time. You know, there were operations through nose and opening skulls and all that. Fortunately, she is much better now. And so, so instead of showing surgeons' tools on the hospital bed, I depicted carpenters' heavy tools, you know, hammer and uh, saw and all that. So just to depict her painful existence. No fresh lesions. Uh, when, you know, on, when I said, when I felt like doing paintings and, you know, at the age of 11, at the same time while playing Gilly Danda, I hurt myself and I lost vision in Manai. I mean, it was an immediate cataract due to injury. And uh, for many years, you know, I mean, I had a very blurred vision. Then in around 90, I noticed that there is something has happened. I can't even see on this side and I had to go to doctors and um, uh, I was told that uh, your retina detachment as well and the other eye, which is fine, which are, there are holes in that retina as well. So my eyes were operated. It was the most traumatic period of my life. And uh, uh, for seven days, I could not see because the eyes were closed. And you can imagine, I mean, forget artists, anybody, you know, not been able to see. It's such a, um, a painful thought. So, uh, you know, I painted this city uh, picture. There is a well-known road called Pedder Road on South Bombay. 
the building which you see, like a jigsaw puzzle, it's just one of the landmark buildings by Charles Scoria called Kanchan Janga. And of course, the, I combined two things, my personal trauma as well as, you know, the Babri Masjid was demolished in 92, December, and uh, subsequent riots and the bomb blast which Bombay saw, it was terrific, you know, I mean, terrible. So, um, as if, you know, I'm sitting the city, I'm seeing the city with wet eyes. And every time when I go for my periodical checkup for my eyes, the doctor has writes under all those diagrams and no fresh lesions, no more injury or no more any more scar. So the, uh, the painting is called no fresh lesions, but we know what kind of a scar and injury has happened to country and to people. I did this painting and uh, uh, for a show dedicated to the city of Bombay. And uh, you see the sea on uh, Marine Drive parapet. Uh, people are sitting there, and um, uh, it's a black water. So it's almost like once you come here, you are stuck. It's like a kalapani, you know. And uh, you see all strange, small, tiny figures who don't have a face, but then there's one face which is well known, which I kind of depicted in the inset. And I thought that there is so much noise and sound, various things. I also. Um, wrote a kind of couplet in Urdu. I don't read Urdu or I don't write Urdu, but I asked Hussain Saab to kind of write me this specific line. And these lines are from Faiz Ahmed Faiz's uh, poetry. Well, it says, Paposh ki kya fikr hai, dastar samhalo, payab hai jo mauj guzar jayegi sar se. It means, ke don't worry for your um, shoe, you know, the, the wave or the water which is coming it will, it may go over your head. Dr. Patel's clinic, Lamington Road. Giv Patel, a well-known painter, poet, writer, and uh, playwright. He is a doctor, so in his clinic, there are some images of well-known artists like the Mehta Akbar Padamsi. And uh, when uh, in 97, when India was celebrating 50 years of independence, we were invited for various shows, and instead of showing, uh, I did two paintings, one, one appreciating one of my favorite artists and one about the condition of the, and the, I mean, you know, I felt that no doubt we are all happy about being, uh, 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 you know, freedom and the freedom is great thing and we are ex definitely happy, but there is no great leadership, no, uh, I mean, Gandhi has gone, old man, you see him on an empty railway platform going back and half the painting is divided by Picasso's uh, uh, mother and child, the um, daughter is learning to walk and the mother's face is anxious. So I was, and then you know, my daughter was born and I was thinking what kind of future she has. All those things were kind of very much there in my head. And you see the Giotto, the great Italian Renaissance masters, um, angels which are hovering around and um, weeping actually. Actually they were kind of weeping over the Christ's dead body. So those images, and so I kind of, you know, I do collaging of, you know, various things. And that's how this large six feet by eight feet oil was done. The second one is this one is the last shot of a, a put trilogy by Satyajit Ray, when father and son meets. I'm a great fan of Satyajit Ray. The film was made in 59, I was born in 59 and uh, I was just wondering that this boy in the film, uh, of course he must have been a little older, older but uh, now at the end of the 20th century what uh, uh, kind of you know, uh, time has changed dramatically. You can see actually you know you won't believe but after doing the Apu uh, painting, this uh, uh, um, the, the previous painting which you saw, the very next painting I did this and I myself was shocked to uh, notice that this is totally different kind of a uh, painting in tonality, in its uh, uh, concept, in its formal things and uh, I think Shole uh, was not actually, um, it was 75 years of, uh, sorry, 25 years of Shole and uh, we were invited. This is again about cinema. It's, um, you see the, the black and white photograph near behind the mirror is a well-known Russian filmmaker called Andrei Tarkovsky. Um, I'm a great admirer of his as well. And um, 100 Years of Cinema was a big show which happened in Bombay. 
and I painted this one. It's called Matreshka. Matreshka means also mother in Russian and the doll which you see in open another, there is another doll, then another doll, that's also called Matreshka. This is again about my sister Naina. She is there behind the endless column. Her two son, Bhupen Khakkar, painter, and uh, myself. It's called Three Painters in front of uh, Rene Magritte's well known painting. The surreal work of Magritte is mysterious work because man is looking his own back in the mirror. So how a painting reveals and how painting conceals, that's what kind of thing I was thinking about. This is about again um, uh, a homage to Prabhakar Barve. Barve was a dear friend in 95 he passed away. I am not going about details about why goats and what kind of you know textures, the reason. There are stories and there are a lot of uh, uh, things. Highway for Mansur. Mansur was a great Mughal master who painted birds and animals. Dada Giri. This is a portrait of a well-known German artist called Gerhard Richter. And I was just kind of the kind of stance and the pose which artist has. And also he talks about Dadaism and uh, you know he rejects uh, the ideas of Marshall Duchamp and Andy Warhol. So there is a kind of a text which is written, you can't read it here, by, from his interview where he's rejecting Dada. But that Dada is totally different. And when I say Dada Giri, is something different. This is again a self-portrait <laughs> um, as Brahma. There was a show happened and we were asked to do a port self portraits and uh, I painted myself as if you know Picasso has painted me. Very jokingly I was telling friend that Picasso did cubism and he said like if there is a table it has a four sides but you only see two sides. So but what all the four sides are shown together on a single picture plane it would uh, um, it would uh, be you know what happened in cubism everything become flat and everything become kind of abstract. So I said, you know, uh, if, he, if he can see four sides together, Brahma had uh, four heads. So I said, it must be because the cubist vision must be, or Brahma's vision must be cubist. Uh, and I said, they will, that's a good idea. So I outright took South Indian calendar of Lord Vishnu and just painted myself as if Picasso has painted me uh, and did the self-portrait. Ganga Vataran. Again here, the the where the, the Ganga is supposed to be located, I mean, it's there, where I have superimposed Marshal Duchamp, great French um, revolutionary artist uh, image called New Descending Staircase. What is interesting that I find that when my mother sees this painting, she knows the myth of Ganga, but she doesn't know Duchamp. And when I show abroad and when I meet people who are those who are from art world or people know Duchamp uh, or sometimes you know, particularly in the West that they don't know the myth of Ganga. So there is, you know, I enjoy this, you know, this puzzling my viewer. You know, I find very, I feel very good that, you know, they, they, they struggle to understand what exactly this means, you know. Um, and then and I know both. So I, I, I like to do this play in my work. Now you will see another kind of uh, a sort of approach. This is a painted painting called Man with Chakki and the circles which you see they are actually the almost one inch diameter mirror uh, which is pasted. So when uh, one is looking a viewer is also reflected fragmentedly uh, on the surface and it's a laminate, um, silver color laminate. And actually the, it's uh, the map of India if you see the contour of the mirror circles. Then uh, this is also painted on a marble pattern laminate and I noticed that uh, art world, world in India was also moving dramatically. My friends were doing all kind of things and sometimes I felt that now we are kind of losing some kind of a code and I wanted to talk about that. And um, so if you notice the kind of a trades which are, it's called a poem for friends, they're all totally unrelated to each other. Um, After um, doing the first lamentation Gandhi painting, 
I felt the need to uh, because I I have always been, always been painting. You also noticed that in 80s, 88 I painted the Sabarmati thing, and then um, in 98 I thought that I you know we call uh, you know India a great nation and all, but we have so much. Um, I mean, there's so much hatred, you know, among the people and the, you know, tension between the communities and how to kind of, you know, talk about all this. I said, you know, we have Gandhi, you know, Gandhi's every third road is called MG road and every sort of, uh, you know, rupee note, stamp, government offices, we have Gandhi's picture. But Gandhi's philosophy of non-violence and uh, love for fellow human being is missing from our life. I said, I have to sort of, you know, deal with this. And I thought the best medium would be watercolor. So first time I ever attempted watercolor on a six feet by four feet. There were large watercolors, and this is the one you know on the uh, morning walk. I painted the whole image upside down because you know I was saying that you know that Gandhian philosophy is not really existing. You know, not only in our country, but I feel overall intolerance. You know so much uh, violence and. Uh, Hatred, you know, so I think um, um, I thought important that I paint Gandhi. It's called post dated check. SS Rajputana, on which he went to round table conference. Painful resolution. Chancellor Gandhi with Tagore, Bapu at Rene Block Gallery, New York, 1974. This is again a kind of story because I thought that I have never painted political or a great statesman and it would be a too political theme how to depict. But during that time I came across Gandhi's statement called uh, uh, I am not, you know, I, I thought, uh, how can, I mean, you do a series on Gandhi, what you have to do with Gandhi. Of course, as a young boy, I did read original Gujarati, uh, and exper my experiment is truth, his autobiography, but uh, I was not sure to do a whole series. And then I came across a um, uh, statement by Gandhi saying, I am not a sheer rishi or philosopher of, of non-violence, but I am an artist of non-violence. I said, if he tells himself artist, then I know what to do with artist and art. So then I kind of, you know, uh, I thought that Gandhi's ideas about um, and his all actions they were all so highly like a contemporary artist, what they do now. Um, um, you know, say if you take Dandi Yatra or lifting the pinch of salt, wearing khadi, the structure of his ashram, non-cooperation. I said, these are all highly conceptual ideas in which, which you know, I mean, he gained also um, in a much bigger way the freedom for a big country. So I thought that I have to, I want to tell that he is the, the first conceptual artist was you know, in, in this world. So how to say that? And for that, I went to German artist called Joseph Beuys. Joseph Beuys, you know, if you know Joseph Beuys, he did all, not like Gandhi, but many actions and gestures. So one of his performance, which is here in New York Gallery, which he did, I'm not going into that detailed story. And um, um, so I, I thought you know, that was the best way to com compare Beuys and Gandhi in one picture plane. Then first time I did a series, you know, which had, which doesn't have a realism. Up till now you must have noticed that there's a realism, photorealism, all kind of realism. But now I did, a, after Gandhi, I thought it was logical to talk about the people, poverty, you know, and uh, living in this country. So there is this female figure sitting on a map of India, um, demonic, uh, you know, almost like a beggar. I thought, you know, is it possible to paint a portrait of a beggar today okay, for contemporary artists and I did a series of large watercolors again four feet by six feet using marble dust and uh, um, acrylic for some effects and uh, it's called um, the series was called Tearscape. This is woman with chakki, houseboat, shipwreck, petals, this is uh, in a way a very important series for me because I first time attempted you know uh, figures which were which are not based on actual people. So very invented kind of uh, figuration. 
but of course i mean you know after doing those th kind of things which are in a way gloomy and dark and uh, serious issues which i attempted i did a series of three painting which are on laminates and uh, it's called tombs day you know when these dignitaries they come the next day you see a picture they go to visit taj so president putin and his wife um, clinton with daughter chelsea and the playing cards which you see on the background they were already ready printed on the laminate you know the sunmica formica kind of a, a, a sheet which you get synthetic which they we paste on on furniture for durability so it, i painted on that with enamel paint pc sarkar so it was a triptych he did some magic for so few second the taj was vanished so originally it was like this then 2001 i did um, i was invited by london's uh, new museum called tate modern to paint something that was a big show about cent century city and um, bombay was one of the cities and uh, specific time period was given and uh, i did this three works called missing missing one missing two missing three my sister my brother and myself and they were painted on the actual roller shutters because shutters are part of urban landscape you know when um, normally in the night or sunday the shops are closed but if sudden curfew is announced and suddenly shops goes down how scary those feelings and emotion we all know that so you know when you see uh, and this shutters and there is no room inside you will see what it is inside so shutter is uh, placed on the wall inside on the wall there is another painting and actually operatable shutter people can actually throw it up pull it down uh, you have to experience a work with your muscles not just kind of looking at the painting and uh, the public life politics and social issues religion cinema all this is the public life which is inside and what is very very private and close to me is on the front and when you do operate this you know i all since i invite my viewer to operate it they scratch uh, and the surface of the shutter gets scratched and when painting is damaged partly so i invite viewer to damage the work to touch the work and when you do this and you also realize and there is a sound you know it hits on the upper level on the spring and there is a heavy industrial industrial sound which is uh, Uh, which is uh, uh, you know which makes you also aware that the whole you know innocent child's face is rolled inside on the this spring and it becomes a kind of a quite poignant experience i feel ajay my brother i love bollywood villains and uh, enjoy them and i planning a big series i did some recently but uh, planning a big series on them that's me then the series of shutters came again gandhi it's called b for bapu mahalakshmi the first time i painted the head on the hood so when you open the shutter the head still remains on the top part like this in 68 sorry 78 in kanpur three sisters sahu sisters they hanged themselves because of the dowry and father could not afford um, that kind of dowry which was expected and i felt that in our families in a hindu family when a girl child is born we say lakshmi is born lakshmi has come and she will bring the prosperity to the family but uh, such a, there is a hypocrisy there is a, such a irony that for the same money and for lakshmi i mean you know these three girls has to hang themselves i said this if i do this it's it's too much like a newspaper direct hard hitting sort of story should i attempt it or should i make it more subtle but i said no it was important and i i very thoughtfully i kept the head of lakshmi smiling lakshmi 
uh, colorful head of portrait of Mahalakshmi on the hood. So you keep seeing even the whole thing is open in the juxtaposition of the three girls. E.T. I did a show in Rana Sofia Museum in Madrid, uh, a solo show called E.T. and Others. And E.T. is Einstein and Tagore. It, this was during, you uh, know, after the uh, uh, September 11, you know, the beautiful twin towers were demolished. Um, I mean, we all saw that on, on the news channels and newspapers and uh, um, uh, it was so, so much painful. We already had gone through all that also in India of uh, terrorism and the attacks and etc. But um, also I was quite... Um, I mean, I am not a political commentator, so I don't know much, but as an artist, emotionally I felt that what I noticed that the small village, you know, the house of mud, if you even hit, you know, with your leg, probably the wall will collapse, that kind of house and, you know, and, and Afghanistan and the Americans were throwing bombs as well as food packets. So that was something which I could not understand. I didn't discuss with anyone, but, you know, I did describe on a war plane, they are throwing food packets. The scribe in medieval period in Europe, you know, when people were not able to read and write, the scribes were there and they would kind of teach and read scriptures for people. So here is the scribe. I was thinking how the time after 1000 years will be written in which I am living. And I thought that the scribe is writing, reading, simultaneously defecating. And uh, the yellow food packets are falling. The giants like Einstein and Tagore has gone. And... Uh, as if, you know, they're seeing the top. So it's, it's uh, again, Gandhi. It's called Gargoyle. The scribe which I was talking, uh, supposed to be knowledgeable man, has gone insane here in this work. Mirage. Then I did, this is my, ever my first installation work, which has a mixed media object inside and uh, it was shown in Manchester in England for the first time. And uh, this was Broken Branches. And uh, the, um, I was invited for a specific show where this fitted this kind of a thing. And the cabinets which you see are based on the kind of cabinets one would see in a memorial museum anywhere. But specifically in Porbandar where Gandhi was born, there are these cabinets are there in one room which has letters and photographs and sometimes some books. So they are very shallow and they are slant from the top so the birds can't sit on it. And, um, but I did this one. When I was doing this that time, it, it, what happened in Godhra and in Gujarat, you know, in Ahmedabad in 2002, the carnage and massacre, you know, that was uh, again a big, big blow to all of us. So, <clears throat> I'll just, there's a kind of overall view of the installation. Now, these are the details in the cabinets. Uh, I mixed all kind of, I, there are human bones, prosthetic used limbs, photographs, painted photographs and various objects, um, building material objects, uh, masons, tools, etc. And But you know, you see this beautiful face, you know, you won't believe, but there is the, in, in Bombay tabloid, one evening tabloid, there was a news item, tiny news item, that this young nine month old child named Sharda in Hyderabad uh, orphanage, her eyes were, uh, cornea was removed and sold for money. Can you imagine? And what happened? Whether anyone was caught, nothing, nothing appeared later. We don't know. You know, so I, I took that photograph, I enlarged it, I kind of painted with tea wash on it. And it was combined with many things. So I mean, um, newspaper, I mean, what was happening in society, in our country, in neighborhood, you know, this all kind of become part of my sort of uh, oeuvre work that time. Now these are the details of the cabinets. Kashmir, I've never been to Kashmir. And uh, what I knew that, you know, the, when the family and people went and they used to bring this kind of wooden birds 
and they used to be put on the wall, you know, in those days. Then a very different kind of series came. You can see that the shift from Gandhi watercolors, early oils, um, tearscape, female figures, uh, shutters, and then uh, installation. And now these are also seven feet by four feet large watercolor when um, charcoal and crushed charcoal and marble dust. They were contemporary Gujarati poetry. The whole thing was rendered with charcoal crushed in water with glue in it and then I applied. So there are layers of things. So when you see the actual painting, you feel as if the text, as if the poem is coming out of the ash. Then another kind of installation I did for the um, uh, hotel in Bombay, uh, a Grand Hyatt hotel and they were doing a lot of artworks, they invited people and uh, one of the theme was given on the main lobby was the, about the Shiva and Parvati because we have very close to Bombay city, the Elephanta Caves and there are beautiful Shiva sculptures. So one of the theme which was given to me was the Shiva and Parvati in the mythology they are playing the game of dice. And while playing the game of dice, Shiva is cheating and Parvati is upset. So um, how to do? So I said my contemporary version of the men-women relationship that I would like to depict. So very metaphorically, symbolically, I am kind of uh, approached the whole thing. <clears throat> the friendship and the break in friendship. Lots of photographs. The back background which you see is the, is the kind of a laminates from Germany and they are like mirror like things, uh, shiny circles. Images from cinema, Indian cinema, western cinema. That's the one with uh, Reshma or Shera Sunil Dutt film, Amitabh Bachchan and Rakhi. Artist Marina Abramovich. Sonia Gandhi, last shot of Pathar Panchali when the, the Brahmin, poor Brahmin decides to leave and his name was Harihar in the film, the name of Shiva and such a profound poverty was shown and uh, uh, beautifully depicted. So these are all details of the, it was called solitude in 100 square feet, the work. Because the actual, there are five cabinets of seven feet, six feet, five feet. And when I counted the square feet, it was exactly 100. Uh, of course, this is a reference to Garcia Marquez's novel, 100 Years of Solitude. The images which you see of this uh, in this photograph is, is Marina Abrama, which is, she is a performance artist and she does amazing performances and uh, one of the greatest living artists I would say. So lots of photographs taken from her but then I kind of put eyes and I juxtapose with skulls and various things. I was talking in the afternoon about Philip Guston. This is the head by Philip Guston. Of course, the, the enameled eye which I kept, but uh, I was talking to a few friends about uh, Philip Guston. Now, again, another kind of work. It's called Cracks in Mondrian, the great Dutch modern master. 
I painted the large, enlarged the Mondrian painting. They were attached to drainage pipes. And uh, the pink patch which you see is supposed to be the map of Delhi. You know, and Sirajud Dola's time, this cartographer came, a French cartographer, who did this maps and plans of the various cities. And then Delhi was not called Delhi, it was called Shah Jahanabad. But because he was French, it was written in this manner. And I said that, uh, you know, I mean, the intention to do this, the, you know, if you see the original Mondria, they are beautiful, but because lots of thick white paint, there are cracks in original paintings, and you see it in European museums. <coughs> Um, I felt that, uh, you know, the, all the time this fight over states, boundaries, line of control, I mean, you know, earth is like a beautiful Mondria and all these boundaries which man has made, those are the, actually the cracks, actually, I, I, I see that way. And I thought I have to do this, you know. I was going into the Mondria period, I wanted Mondria to come in my time, so I attached it with a drainage pipe, you know, you know I mean, outside in... Not here. I mean, this is such a beautiful city with lovely buildings. But in Bombay, you see those tiny buildings with tiny rooms. And outside the window, the drainage pipes run. And that square uh, of window, rectangle, which I thought that let me kind of make it a bit uh, um, sculptural installation kind of work. But at the same time, you know, the austerity, the purity of Mondria is attached to drainage. And we know what runs through the drainage pipe. So I thought... Uh, it's time to even say this. Kashmir, Bengal. I mean, see, actually, the you know plans and maps are. I mean, the are all the time changing. They they, they don't remain same. We today, what we know, Bengal is different than this pink patch. And this pink patch was heavily loaded, painted with marble and acrylic. So if you see the original work, it's almost like a wound. Gujarat. This is different kind of installation. The large scale gallows and the poems is attached in English is originally in Kannada by 12th century Vachana poet Allama Prabhu, translated of course by A.K. Ramarujan. There is a wonderful classic Penguin has published called Speaking of Shiva. When you are looking at the work, you are reading the poetry you can actually see it as a painting and there is a mirror attached. So viewer sees himself and sees this kind of, uh, I find it beautiful, the gallo, you know, as a sculptural piece, as an aesthetic object. But we know that, you know, it's a sign of punishment, uh, you know, fearful object. It depicts death. And I, I was thinking that, you know, the, the fear of death is always, all the time we carry. We are not always aware, but we do carry the death, fear of death in our inside. So I said, you know, but if you, if you see this work, you know, when you, I mean, from a distance, you know, you feel a little shocked by the whole thing, but if you start seeing it, observing it, start reading the poems, start looking at the painting, see yourself, you know, move, go close, then I think, you know, you start enjoying a work of art and the aesthetic and the beauty which work of art generates. And if you start seeing life and uh, uh, whole living or being, probably the fear of death might go away. Might, I'm not sure. I am also, I don't know. And though it was written in 12th century, but they were so contemporary, they were so uh, modern, I mean, the text. It was called Devout Darkness, the five gallows which I did. They were shown in New York's Armory show in 2005, I think. Then I went to Singapore to work with uh, in a paper mill uh, where they actually prepare paper, paper in a print uh, institution called Singapore Tyler Print Institute, where you are provided a fantastic setup where you can actually work when the paper is at least still in the form of pulp, and you can actually, uh, you know. Um, um, embodied things inside, you can kind of pour, you can paint, you can draw, all that. So, I did a series about the character Shabri from Ramayan. And uh, the idea came after seeing Nandalal Bose's uh, 
three shabris, shabri in her youth, shabri in her middle age and shabri in her old age. And if you know the story of shabri, the shabri was an old lady waiting for Lord Ram and um, she waited and the berries she would kind of taste, not to give him sour ones but the sweet ones and then she got salvation. This is the, what we know. But when I saw Nandilal Bose's three works which are in Delhi's NGMA, I, you know, when he did three versions, one is a youth, so youth is, you know, she's a semi-nude, like a santhal naked woman on a, uh, holding the branch on a tree trunk and uh, second one is the kind of a, in her middle age. This is somebody in her youth, somebody in the middle age, somebody in old age. So I said, you know, I mean, this is amazing that Nandalal was thought of doing a shabri in her youth because what we know is only shabri in her old age. So, and when Ram met Shabri, Shabri was already very old and Ram was young. So that means that uh, when Shabri was young, probably Ram was not even born. It means that, you know, we are talking about pre-epic time, you know, pre-mythic uh, sort of uh, uh, area. So what was Shabri's youth? Then I discovered, I spoke to some scholars, but you don't get much, little bit you get on the net as well. But it, it says that Shabri was an extremely sensitive human being. She come from a tribal Bheel community and for her marriage, uh, the family killed lots of, any, for the for wedding feast, um, there were um, lots of uh, you know, animals and birds were killed. When she saw that violence, she renounced the world. And then she was waiting for Ram, she heard of Lord Ram and wanted to meet, that's how. So I did this series called Shabri in her youth after Nandalal Bose. It was called Wet Sleeves of My Paper Robe. All kind of techniques has been used in this one. I am not going into details because you actually can't even see carefully. But these are artificial hairs and paper pulp, uh, 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 paper mache roses. This is called Lanka Burning. Fourth Shabri. Sunray, Shabri entering in her middle age, Shabri shaking Mondriya, because Mondriya started with the tree trunks, the vertical tree trunk, horizontal branches and he arrived to this kind of abstraction. So here she is shaking Mondriya and berries are falling. This is lithograph, this is also lithograph with her birds. Then I did, you know, the same size uh, watercolors called just birds. These are just for myself. I did it and uh, it's like kind of uh, after doing two heavy works, I feel like relaxing and I do this kind of sometimes, you know, things. So these are kind of um, ornithological studies. This I've never shown anywhere. I did a show in um, Shanghai. This is called um, All the Way Up to Jezuri, uh, a well-known Marathi bilingual poet, Eng bi English and Marathi poet. Arun Kolatkar was a dear friend. Uh, he passed away in 2004 and he wrote a book called Jezuri. Jezuri is a temple town near Pune, in near Bombay. And uh, it's, uh, it's, it's also kind of one of the classics uh, in uh, modern poems in, uh, written in today in English in India. So the text are from uh, Arun's uh, poetry called Jezuri and I did the whole installation with there were four pillars, there were, uh, I fixed the tiles of all kind of uh, religion. This is large, almost 8 feet by 5, 4 feet long work, like a jail door and the poem is inside. And this is the poem. Then painter Bhupen Khakhar died in 2003. He was a very dear friend. We used to laugh a lot and share many things in, for, in terms of you know, talking art and uh, his ideas. and. Um, 
he had a great sense of humor and i he has a very odd unusual style and i loved his kind of naive sort of approach to figuration but uh, he was very sharp and brilliant in his concepts so these are the bhupen's few it's called uh, it's called khakkar mala this one and there are some 13 14 uh, small portraits painted on dried people leaf bhupen's portraits Of course, Baroda has not yet given him a road, but I just made one sign myself for him. Vallabh Bhai, Ranchod Bhai, Shankar Bhai, Hira Bhai and Pandu. Pandu was his servant. They were all Bhupen's kind of uh, friends and uh, um, uh, so I made one kind of uh, shop signs for their uh, thing. I mean, you know, what was challenging for me that I, I thought that I would, uh, you know, I mean, a, a shop signs, can it come to a, a high pedestal art or in a gallery? And if it can, then how, in which context? So I just kind of did this. Of course, there are lots of puns and lots of hidden sort of uh, meaning which I'm not going deep into. But those who knew Bhupen closely, he would kind of they would kind of notice or read. A joke for Sri Khakkar. You know, uh, thoughts, daily thoughts from Bapu, which I also had a one kind of a marble plank engraved and kept in the gallery. Then a series of paintings came uh, between 2003 and 2006. I did called Saptapadi, Scenes from Marriage Regardless. And it was like a take on marriage life, uh, the joy and sorrow of married life. And I took it in a much humorous way. So, and they were painted on laminates with enamel paint. <coughs> it's called Couple with Coffee Pot. You know, the, the Tom and Jerry cartoon which you see, they were already existing when I bought the laminate. And around that, I composed my figures. It's called Charu. <coughs> There's a reference to all the three actors from Europe. Vijit Bardo, Jane Morrow, and uh, <coughs> anyway, Scenes from Marriage, the title from Bergman's film, Lee Ullmann, uh, Swedish actress. And all the, uh, and in Charu, they, it's, the, all the four films are about the tension between the marriage. Unmarry Monarch, Rehman from Chaudhvi Ka Chand. The dragon was already there when I got the laminate. I'm just saying, so you know that it's not a painted one, it was a kind of a printed one. Bloodline. Family tree. The baby is me and my parents. And the P Picasso painting which you see, large horizontal figure, nude under a pine tree, it was the same day when I was born. He painted on that single day. I found out from the uh, London Museum catalog. Actually, when I started this series, the series started with you know the things which I read in the local, very those uh, pulp cheap magazines, you know, which I, I like all kind of things to read and see. So there is this couple uh, uh, which I came across in a magazine. Uh, his name is Vasant Jain and his wife Anita Jain, and they are in a small town near Indore called Rajnand, and they have a shop. And he always wear the same shirt as his wife's sari. And I found that very cute. So this one is called Adam and Eve. Now this gentleman, he supplies, his name is, this one is called Sri Jeevan Chaya, which is 17th and 18th wife. He supplies extras to the Gujarati film industry, which is the most third grade film industry in the world. And he supplies extras. And he's actually married to 17th and 18th wife. I, I, I know it's totally illogical. It's not legally thing, but uh, 
I read about them in the paper. And this gentleman, um, it's called Pringle Mala. And this is uh, um, the event which was sponsored by Pringles in Thailand. He's in the Guinness Book of Record. And um, for 45 years, he didn't cut nails in his one hand. You can see the long, those nails. So when he's traveling, you know, at the airport, he stopped. And uh, there's a big sack hanging. And they would ask that, um, um, open, I mean, they open and see it. And even the security gets horrified to see that. So I was, and you know, the wife is very happy sitting next to him. And I was just wondering how he was doing his daily things. How he was sleeping, going to a toilet, you know, taking a bath. I mean, it was quite uh, this thing. So from there it started. That's my wife. <coughs> It's called Angelina. Then the series, oh good, because I was not sure that you know, these subtle watercolors, these are the same size watercolors, imperial size, called Pale Ancestors, I did. And I was not sure whether it will be kind of seen properly, but I think quite uh, clear, the images. I did uh, almost 48 watercolors in one go. And I start without having any notion what I'm going to do. I would just draw something and the figure would tell me to do this and every work had a title which was also part of the painting. This is called Poet. Scribe. You know, when I did this one, there was at that time a British artist called Damien Hurst, uh, a fantastic artist, no doubt. He did uh, one skull, human skull, which was full of diamonds. More than 7,000 diamonds were covered on it. And it was one of the most expensive, something like 100 million pound. It was, you know, prized, and uh, they were thinking to sell, not sell. So lots of things were talked about uh, the pricing of the work. You know, I mean, the work itself is also beautiful. I like it very much. You know, because it's just full of diamonds and you know, uh, beautifully crafted. But uh, I, you know, I was also irritated because Indian art was also going through auctions and auction prices and pricing, and you know, actually, creativity and the work of art is something else. And I know all the time attaching. I mean, money is important, but you can't keep on talking about that. So I just did this. I said, you know, if poet, poet in this is an artist. I don't mean a specific poet, but a poet is something, is, is like the ultimate artist kind of thing. He would piss on it, you know. He wouldn't give a damn, you know, whether it's for 100 millions or 500 millions, you know. So I, I was a bit angry, and I just did this watercolor. Scribe. Doctor from Mozambique. Shop in Beirut, Ma, Walking Man, Kabul Express, Babel, Hunter, Kaftan, Dead ancestor. Uh, just one independent cabinet which I did was made into mild steel and then painted with uh, white uh, fiber paste. And there were cement blocks inside. The images, black patches which you see, they are the images of uh, American abstract artist called Robert Motherwell's uh, series of large painting called uh, um, Elegy to Spanish Republic. So those are there. It had many objects inside. And the back side of the uh, 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 cabinet was a large poem, a text written in Marathi by a poet called uh, Raghu Dandavati. Unfortunately, Raghu is also no more. Um, but uh, the work was called New Friend. And the Marathi poem, I mean, in Marathi, it, it is Navinath's Dost. The poem is, um, I can translate it for you, that it says that uh, I see a, a new friend in the village these days. I see a new friend in our village these days, smiling, smiling, holding a rifle in his hand, a man, I see him every day. He smiles, he drinks water, he talks, he smokes, he sits on the bench, holding rifle in his 
hen, a man. I see him every day. Morning, evening, evening or morning or evening, once, at least once in a day, I see him holding a rifle in his shoulder, a man smiling, smiling. That's the poem. These are the details of the uh, inside the cabinets. This grey images which you see are from uh, Motherwell images, the grey form. Of course, he painted on oil on canvas. Behind the blocks, Ciporex blocks, which were carved and put cement in it, uh, that's how the mother well images were created. But behind that, there were skulls and bones were kept. Then, one of my, in a very recent work, two years back, I did a, a, a site-specific work for a private house in Bombay. I was invited and uh, they wanted me to do something. As you enter in the house, it's a bungalow and nice house, beautiful house with lots of other artworks. There is a long passage which you go through and uh, um, the work is this. But before the work comes, there is a gap and uh, I mean there is a sort of a entrance for another room and there is a wall. On that wall, first you enter and you read this. Again, this is from Allama Prabhu, the Kannad poet. And it was an installation with 21 marble temples with objects inside. And they were lit with LED lights. Now these are the indiv individual independent temples. The whole work is called Between Heaven and Earth. the detail of the this one uh, last year i had a show in uh, delhi called malevich matters and other shutters malevich was a russian minimalist artist early period of 20th century. I like his work very much and um, uh, I mean I was using Malevich in one of the paintings and I thought the title sounds good, Malevich Matters and Other Shutters, that's why the title. And uh, you know when I did my actual roller shutter paintings, the operatable ones, and I felt that uh, you know I always had three reproductions, full closed view, full open view and half open view. So when I used to see half open view, I would, uh, I would feel that uh, what if I paint it on a flat canvas? So these are what you see now. They are not actual shut operatable shutters, but they are actual oil painting on canvas. And there are all kind of references from Picasso to Ravindra Reddy and uh, uh, stuff like that. So there are details now from the, the previous one. The previous one is called Lens End. And they were large, 8 feet by 5 feet. Say no Bologna. It's a kind of a homage to the Santini Ketan masters, Ravindranath, Avnindranath, Nandalal, and Vinod Bihari. And in the bottom, the yellow painting which you see with a slit is Lucio Fontana, Italian master, who slit 
who cut his canvases from the center and say no bolona is just simple say no bolona as we say in hindi don't say say no bolona that's avnindranath's portrait first day in paris again there is a kind of a uh, reference to Gandhi and actually it has to do with my very first day in Paris what happened to me I'm not going into that day but so there are all those references I mean you can say that but you know you know and it's your biography your personal thing how does viewer should read it but I think viewer is open to do interpretations in his own way need not have to kind of have a what artist believes and what artists intentions are that's not important at all now this poem is by a Gujarati poet Kamal Vora. It says, "If I indu todu, that's when if I break the egg, many suns may come out from the egg, or the globe of the earth, or a roaring sea. If I break the egg, but the egg which I'm holding in my hand, what if I don't break it? That's the poem. J boys and sons." Fool's house. Then I did three paintings uh, which were shown in last year in Basel Art Fair uh, in Switzerland and they were large 9 feet by 6 feet the usual shutter size which I do and they are operatable shutters they were based on three paintings by Bhupen Khakkar called Janta Watch Repairing, Sheikh Shumart and Shankar Saloon and those three paintings were also borrowed from the collections and were put along with these works of course the image what which you see on the top are from Malevich uh, Russian painter and uh, I did the kind of uh, uh, holes uh, with welding machine that uh, into the shutter and uh, they were like bullet marks there are actual holes on the shutter They look like this. Then one of the recent work last year I did called Saraswati. After doing Mahalakshmi, I thought I wanted to paint Saraswati as well. So I took the oleograph of Raja Ravi Verma and painted it. The Darga in Karbala. And the map, the black patch which you see is the map of Qatar, where Hussein, MF Hussein lives now. Yeah, these are 7 feet by 5 feet large uh, watercolors. And uh, this are part of my If It Rains Fire was my show in Berlin last November. So some of the works from the Berlin show. They were very subtle. So actually can't see but I, I was tempted to still share with you then some of the works in the show were painted on the back side of canvas but they were they are not the real canvas they are made out of mild steel and mild steel and they were oxidized and with a heavy fiberglass paste the image were rendered and some mu museum magnets which you get, get in European museums were shown. So this one is called self-portrait between Pakistan and Bangladesh. I mean, of course, between Pakistan and Bangladesh, there is India. So, <clears throat> so it's like this. Robe drying. Again, the mother well images. And these are the small, tiny magnets which are like this you see on the top there because it's a steel you know uh, the surface of the canvas uh, I it's called Lapisius pissing woman holding mother well painting 
and all Leonardo females in the form of magnets. This is Motherwell. This is one of the first one actually of Robert Motherwell. And I like that name Motherwell. So I had all magnets which had kind of mothers in this specific work. It's called Picnic with Picabia. Picabia was along with Marcel Duchamp, one of the important French master during the early period in 20th century. Then I did this recent work which is shown in the, during art summit in Delhi called Portrait of a Dealer and there were stories about uh, those uh, uh, about fox and grapes and how a man wanted to have a golden duck, all golden duck at the same time he kills the duck, uh, those stories in the background and there were villains were painted. On. This is the second one. So when I showed this, all my friends were happy, but no dealer were kind of, uh, they, uh, they were smiling and laughing. They, they said, okay, we don't take it personally, it's fine. Uh, but I had a good time. Ajit from Yadon Ki Bharat. Then <laughs> this is the last work which I am showing. Is it okay, no? I mean, time-wise, yeah, good. Um, I did a work uh, for a show in, about humor in, in Delhi, and the work was called Anarkali and 72 Idiots. And uh, this female, you see, it's, it was a photograph, 72 fo uh, works on digitally sort of rendered work, and uh, one photograph, and uh, the, de the dealer herself uh, is here, and we were together in China, and. Uh, you know, uh, you go to monuments and they give you dress, you dress and take pictures, that kind of thing. So I took this picture then uh, of a lady called Tunti Chawan of Gallery Threshold. And um, then there are 72 images along with this, this one color photograph. I took a drawings done by an artist from Bombay called Krishnamachari Bose about artists. And I just took his catalog and I just did with a marker few marks on each portrait and they are all well-known artists. This is Rameshwar Bruta. This is Jatin Das. So the black marker thing is my drawing and they were all small uh, 72 works. Anju. Vivan Sundaram. Arpita Singh. Bhupen Khakkar. Krishnamachari Bose. Ganesh Pine, Gulam Mohammad Sheikh, Jangir Sabawala, Jitish Kalat, Jogen Chaudhary, KG Subramanian, MF Hussain, Nilima Sheikh, Paramjit Singh. Ranbir Kaleka, Ram Kumar, S.H. Raza, Tayab Mehta, Bharti Kher, and myself. That's it. Thank you. <laughs> if you have any questions or doubts or um, want to have some observation, welcome. We, are, we all are going away from reality. So here is a work that uh, mirrors reality in a very outspoken way. So can, uh, uh, can I call you as people's painter? And second thing, uh, 
how is your realistic work is perceived in the higher class society well my work has been taken quite well people like my work they respect me they uh, good response but uh, um, i do all kind of things you saw there are very hard eating works like mahalakshmi broken branches then there are very funny and stupid work like this uh, but i do it we used to do in, as a young child in, in school you know uh, photographs ke upar you know gandhi ji with dark glasses or something like that so that's spontaneity i allow and i allow many things so i think uh, people's artists you can say call me anything it's up to you I, mean, I have seen that Mona Lisa where she, they painted a moustache on That's her. That's right. They call it, call it L H O Q yeah, or something yeah. like that. Yeah. I'm just wondering, that has a spirit of nihilism, whereas this very interestingly has a kind of humor, a liveliness, very different in spirit. I, how would that have uh, happened, really? Because that's the same kind of concept as such. Yeah, well, you know, it was exactly 100 years ago. You can imagine Marshall Duchamp when he did the moustache to Mona Lisa postcard. Uh, it was that hundred years back, and uh, of course here I was taking a kind of a very uh, in a lighter vein that uh, the whole uh, I did portraits of dealer, and then I said I want to do artist also, so uh, wanted to make fun, of course, and at the same time, you know, uh, uh, I was also thinking that uh, a sheer mark. You know, and I must tell you that I had two catalogs because he gave two catalogs to us artists. And I, when I saw Bose's work, you know, that I was not really happy with those works. So I said, "Now, this catalog I will do." So I said, "Let me just do something." So I took the marker and spontaneously, at the very first moment, what happened that I did. And, but because I had two portraits, I said, "I will do another one for you know, for some artists." That second thought giving and second time attempting that was not working. So I said, "Jo hua, wo ghadi pe spontaneously." I had not planned. I will do, you know, this to myself or that to other person, someone beard or someone moustache. Not, not. At that moment, I felt, oh, it should be like this. I just showed few, but there were 72. So um, the spontaneity, you know, my 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 concern was creativity. Say a mark, a drawing. You know, we do we do sketch, we do kind of you know draw with pencil or marker. So uh, there are so many ways. You have to create a context, and you have to also create a kind of uh, uh, the way in which you know it should be convinced, or it should be justified for myself to begin with. Whether it's a work of art, it works or no, that's not the issue at the moment. So I think that's how I I went for this. And since the show is about humor and wit in contemporary Indian art. I thought it's it was good. I'll ask just one question, sure. which I think must be in the minds of many because we have seen that National Art Week of New Media, and many of us have been exposed to that kind of work. Since you, you know, uh, do all kinds of things, you make you know, realistic portraiture, you yeah. uh, uh, refer to history, you refer to artists' works, and great masters. Then you, you know, also do installation work. And wh where do you think, uh, like, especially the last? Uh, art summit in Delhi. Now, where do you think Indian art, in which direction it is moving? You know, I mean, Indian art is uh, moving in a great way because there are you know many artists working in a diverse medium and material. I mean, it's not just uh, uh, you know oil on canvas or bronze and marble, you know, and for sculptures. It's not just that. So photography, video. Installation, mixed media, a lot of things are happening. So it, I think, and we you know we are all all that are traveling, showing auctions are happening, works are selling for good prizes, etc. But I think what I am lacking is you know the awareness of common man. I feel it's my responsibility not just to kind of go to Paris or you know Berlin and exhibit my work, but I feel you know my people here, we should have you know a common man, general public coming to art gallery. Like when I exhibit in Bombay, in South Bombay, you know I mean those. Connoisseurs and those rich people, they come for the opening, you know, and um, they acquire, they talk, they're nice people, they understand. But I think, what about Bombay? Is such a huge city. What we have done that we should be able to take them to come to the galleries. So that those kind of events are not happening, you know. And unfortunately, we lack biggest thing is the museums. I feel that um, you know, I mean, I know, you know, when you talk about this, they immediately the government. Say that we don't have money. We have different issues. There is a lot to tackle in terms of poverty. These, that, many issues. There. And every time when it comes to culture, they would say that 
कि भाई पैसे नहीं है यू नो ऑल दैट आई थिंक इट्स नॉट जस्ट क्वेश्चन ऑफ मनी इट्स अ क्वेश्चन ऑफ यू नो विजन इफ यू हैव अ ग्रेट विजन आई मीन यू कैन काइंड ऑफ यू नो पुल क्राउड यू कैन इन्वाइट पीपल सो आई थिंक इट्स एक्सट्रीमली इंपॉर्टेंट दैट यू नो आर्टिस्ट important artists of the country they should go to small towns ex- exhibit their work show their work talk about their work and kind of you know share with vast number of people because you know that's the this is my responsibility i feel and it's not that you know it's there you know you, one can go and see you know it's not like europe you know when the in paris has 70 museums and you know each museum is active you don't know where to go and how much to see is that kind of thing whereas you know culturally we i feel that you know in a very small pocket small small things are happening but it has started now private corporate people have started making their museums and uh, um, shows are happening and for a wrong reason contemporary art is very much in today and that's money you know when tayab mehta fetched million dollar it was everywhere so when i was interviewed i said that new york times writing half page article on tayab mehta after 1 million fetched this man all life is what he worked he worked in a single bedroom that was his studio and he always painted if you would have not fetched 1 million dollar you would have not written about him so i think you know money has become criteria kind of you know and then so these are all false notions which are happening also which we have to be careful uh, the content of your paintings and and what you were talking right now uh if uh, if we were to sort of connect the dots you know do you think uh and you're talking about this sort of really interesting in between space of personal and you know what's happening on the street and you're sort of bringing it and juxtaposing it uh but when you're showing it you're showing it in a sort of this white spaced gallery or you know a sort of very traditional space and when you're sort of talking about you know uh you know the whole uh, idea of you know taking art to the people or you know so sort the of people can sort of get you know get at what what it means or you know mm-hmm. um so ha- so so there's, there's a format of it you know is there like especially when we have such a such a rich visual um you know sort of uh, vocabulary in the street you know uh, there's so many things happen which you you know depict also in your paintings so is there is there a way of going back to that space to sort of activate that space and 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 well i mean there are all kind of things you know the uh, people going on the street doing performance and that can happen but i think basically i think you know a work of art is conceived in a certain context uh, depends what kind of work of art what kind of thing so i think uh, uh, often these are you know very seriously thought out works and uh, so that's why you know you need that kind of uh, your space you know museum i mean one can have a show i mean shows in a very unusual spaces but then that's a site specific work which one can like i'm thinking of doing a large show on the railway platform in bombay you know and one of the project is there and i'm thinking but then you know to have oil painting on the street or on the platform there's so much dust and so much sunlight bright light people coming security lot of you know things are um, I think ये बातचीत इतनी self explanatory थी along with the work he was explaining probably we are not left with many questions although there will be a lot of questions which you have raised but you can't really find easy answers so one has to really look at your work because such a huge body of work one has to keep looking at it again and again and again maybe through books or through documentaries in museums and maybe keep discovering uh, slowly Uh, what you really mean to say because as you said everybody has to interpret your work according to one's own understanding of life of art of history of our contemporary times and i also request you all tomorrow uh, if you can find that time is the last day of the workshop uh, there's 10 young college of art students who have been uh, invited to participate in this workshop which he's been leading and they are the great beneficiaries uh, so if you have the time kindly have a look at what they are producing there thank you once again kindly share a cup of tea with us and you are free to talk to uh, dodia ji there also